Despite the fact that Doctor Who is a shadow of its former self and has been since around about 2018, yes, it actually has been that long, and that the fandom has largely walked away, the return and reunion of David Tennant and Russell T. Davis sent shockwaves through the fandom. Shockwaves that only intensified, of course, when Tennant's three special episodes came out and were little more than a bunch of social justice propaganda and messaging at best and at worst torpedoed the canon of the show and the lore and history of the Doctor. The now infamous bi-generation, you get it, that left a new gay black doctor taking over for Tennant, but also left Tennant alive and resurrected all the other doctors as well, at least according to RTD, is potentially just like a gunman lining up the kill shot and preparing to take it. The shot that the series will of course eventually have to take to the face. And even some unlikely sources are agreeing. So, here's the bottom line question. Given that David Tennant is, no matter what you think, and I know there are people who disagree and have just as much right to, but given that Tennant is the most popular Doctor of the modern series' history, and given that the show is on some pretty shaky ground going forward with what we have learned from the leaks about Series 14, is it actually time then for the show to say goodbye to David Tennant once and for all? Well... Let's get into it, shall we? Hello and welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will. See what I did there. Hope you're having a lovely day. If you find that you're enjoying the content at some point, then please click that like button and subscribe to the channel if you would like to support me and help me out in the fight against absolute nonsense, monsters and propaganda. Thank you very, very much. Let's go over here to, strangely enough, Vox, a site that more often than not sits on the left side of the fence, but here actually makes some points that I am going to explore. Hope you'll come along for that then. Doctor Who's big twist betrayed the show's oldest rule. Doctor Who has got to learn to get, uh, sorry, learn to let go of David Tennant. Well, I mean, yeah, there, there are some points, there, there, there are some criticisms there. Uh, you could say David Tennant is beloved and no one's ever going to say they don't want to see more of his doctor although it has been largely tarnished by the fact that he's suddenly become gay and allows these fucking activists to criticize the hell out of him no matter what he's doing well i mean you could just suck it up or you could say yeah get rid of tenant it's time to move past him i don't know He's my favourite, but on the other hand, I'd rather not see him get stabbed in the back anymore. Anyway, let's see what it says. In its most recent episode, Doctor Who broke one of its oldest and most fundamental rules. On the one hand, it can be exciting when a long-running pop culture property breaks a rule it has set for itself. Honestly, I haven't seen an example of that for a very, very long time. Not for it being good, anyway. It means something interesting is about to happen. Well, yeah, okay. On the other hand, sometimes breaking a rule is boring and self-indulgent. I'm afraid that in Doctor Who's case, we're following the second scenario. Here's the trick that made Doctor Who run for 60 years since its first premiere in 63, plus or minus a decade-long hiatus and an ill-advised TV movie, The Doctor Always Changes. Well, I wouldn't call that the oldest rule. I mean, they weren't planning for that to happen when they started the show. They just had to because William Hartnell was going to die in real life. So, anyway, Doctor Who is an institution of science fiction, but it has deceptively simple premise. The titular Doctor is a member of an alien race known as the Time Lords. He has a time machine, a spaceship, the TARDIS, blah, blah, blah. He likes to pick up a friend periodically, usually a human from the 20th or 21st centuries, frequently a young woman, and travel with them through time and space having adventures. They go back in time, they can explore all this and that. You know what Doctor Who is if you're watching this video. Every time the Doctor dies, he regenerates into a new body played by a new actor. We also know this. He ex this expresses his personality shifts. He can be crotchety, fun-loving, aggressive or cold. He gets a new signature outfit, a new signature catchphrase. He loses old companions and gains new ones and redecorates the TARDIS. Yet the Doctor remains the same character with the same history. He always changes. He is 
not the he is always the same right he always changes but he always is the same this paradox is the heart of the show and i find it interesting here that they haven't dwelt on the fact that the doctor has also been a woman now in several incarnations according to the ridiculous canon destroying timeless child storyline but they aren't calling the doctor a they them they're saying he that's interesting this paradox is the heart of the show, and it's why Doctor Who has managed not just to last so long, but also to turn out good episodes on a fairly regular basis. The premise of regeneration is flexible, it's practical, it can withstand cast shifts and actor disputes, it prevents stasis and staleness, most importantly it speaks to the truth of how identities work. Oh dear. Are we going down the identity rabbit hole? Our personalities are not set, they flux and change and distort themselves in bizarre ways we can never fully understand. We change, we grow, we lose who we used to be. Okay, no, actually, I stand by that, that's definitely true. I have certainly changed in the last couple of years compared to a couple of years ago, compared to 20 years ago or 10 years ago or 5 years ago. Absolutely. And I bet you watching this can think of several different versions of yourself from your life that you have experienced as you've grown and changed and interacted with the world and been affected by it of course we all change and that's one of the things about the doctor that is very interesting the doctor changes more dramatically than any human being ever will or ever could all of which is why the doctor's most recent regeneration which aired december 9th is so frustrating doctor who broke its own rules for the first time the doctor kept his past self yes and i pointed this out in my initial response to the by generation where i said that the stakes had been destroyed there was no point anymore there as long as that there are two doctors you've got two invincible time lords who can forever regenerate running around and that you never know you might just find another one that you don't want to get rid of until eventually every single doctor never dies they just grow a new doctor and then they go off and retire instead of dying one of the tragedies and and most gripping parts of the show was the fact that the doctor dies but doesn't die. They re they're reborn. But you have lost the time that you had with the Doctor that was. That is what makes it precious. I have said this on several occasions. And I've said it in the comments to many of you as well. What makes life precious is that it doesn't last. It isn't forever and we know it. All that is for us is to give our best and do the best that we can with the time that we are allotted. The time that we have before we snuff it and cease to exist. If we knew we would live forever, we just wouldn't care. People would become slovenly and slobby and they wouldn't give a shit about what they do and how the world is affected by it or how the world affects them. It's about the fact that we get older, we age, we, we wither and we die. And that is what makes it precious. And therefore, that's what makes a doctor's run in the show precious. We know it's not forever. We know that they are going to go one day and we will be getting a replacement who we might not like as much. But with the doctor, it's a little more dramatic than that because it is a literal death and there's no turning back. Or at least there wasn't any turning back until now. The newest episode was the third and final of a mini season's worth of special specials airing between 14 and 15. These specials were highly anticipated because they were all written by Russell T. Davis, who first resurrected the Doctor, blah, 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 blah. Tennant's uh, return to the role was teased when Jodie Whittaker's 13th Doctor died. <laughs> I love it. It just said died. Oh, yeah, she died. She died in every single episode she was in. She was fucking terrible. Officially, the 13th Doctor was supposed to regenerate into a 14th Doctor played by Shunji Gatwa, the first black actor to play the Doctor. Uh, instead, in a surprise twist, Whitaker transformed into Tennant, now taking on the role of the 14th Doctor. If you thought the appearance of David Tennant was a shock, we've got plenty more surprises for on the way. The path to Shunji 15th Doctor Doctor is late. I cannot stop trying to present, uh, trying to pronounce that N in his name. Shooty Gatwa's 15th Doctor is laden with mystery, horror, robots, puppets, danger, and fun. Teased Davis, omitting there that he also crowbarred in about as much social justice politics as he possibly could, having a trans character, having the Doctor turn out to be gay, having the Doctor get lectured for no longer being a woman. It was woke as fuck, and that's why we don't like it. 
The official plan was that Tennant would play the 14th Doctor through the three 2023 spatals, and at the end, Tennant's 14th Doctor would transform into Gatwas, and that's not what happened, is it? We all know that the Doctor instead split into two people, keeping David Tennant alive and resting with his old companion Donna Noble while the new Doctor goes off and has the adventures. So that also therefore means presumably he remains available for guest appearances whenever ratings are in danger. Now, of course, Russell Davis has said that David Tennant is parked and he is not going to be making appearances, kind of throwing David Tennant under the bus there a little bit, but I'm sure David Tennant is probably fine with it. But the problem is we know. We know that the Doctor is still alive. We know that there are two Doctors. The woke people are pissed because Shooty Gatwa's Doctor is not the Doctor, it's a Doctor. And we are annoyed because we've had the law destroyed. And we are super annoyed because it means that all the Doctors are apparently alive and kicking now, surviving their own regenerations and popping back up where they died. How stupid is that? It says the transition is a remarkable echo of the last time David Tennant's 10th Doctor regenerated back in 2010. Back then, the Tennant already had a handy clone available who went to live off with his old companion Rose Tyler in an alternate universe while the central 10th Doctor reluctantly died and transformed into Matt Smith. This time, the 14th Doctor doesn't have to die or even so much as move to a different dimension. He simply retires to the suburbs. Yeah, it's shit, isn't it? The persistent desire to hang on to Tennant shows Doctor Who, and particularly Davies' as Doctor Who, taking out, talking out of both sides of his mouth. It's as if the show is saying, yes, yes, on one hand the Doctor always changes, but on the other hand he's also always David Tennant, and he is also always living somewhere safely with your favourite companion unless you're a Martha fan. LMAO. Yeah, the Martha was not very popular. Tennant gets treated as though he is somehow more the Doctor than any other incarnation. Well, I mean, of course, if anybody was going to play the Doctor more than anybody else, they were going to be associated with the Doctor more. And now that David Tennant has had two active roles as the runs as the Doctor, I mean, you know, we've seen Tom Baker too in the 50th, don't forget that, implying that the Doctor will run, one day spend a little bit of time as Tom Baker again, curating the museum. Well, I mean, that's definitely viable now, isn't it? Thanks to the uh, Doctorverse that uh, Russell Davis announced. So, I don't know if this is necessarily true or not, but it says on the official Doctor Who podcast, Davis teased the idea that the bi-generation of 14 and 15, it may have caused the whole timeline to bi-generate, so that each Doctor is now alive in a splinter timeline. Yeah, but that's the way things were already, right? Timelines were different. Parallel dimensions. Multiverse. I don't know. I think all of the Doctors came back to life with their individual TARDISes, and they're all out there traveling around in what I'm calling a Doctorverse. And, and a terrible and hackneyed idea that I basically crapped on in another video recently, and a couple of videos actually, and part of this video in fact. The attempt at Marvel-style endlessly overlapping universe line is self-indulgent and sentimental in all the wrong ways. It is a betrayal of what makes regeneration such a durable and dramatically rich premise, which is that the Doctor can never fully regain his past self, and neither can the audience. Even if you are a Time Lord, the past is a foreign country, and your own personal past especially so. We can never fully go back. Until the BBC decides it's time it's got its own MC you in which case we go back again and again i do not think this is a good thing at all for the show i think this is an absolutely terrible idea i think that it is going to ruin the show if you make it so that there is no way the doctor can die and every doctor survives then there are no stakes a diegetic world as in a secondary world that you impart yourself mentally into while you're enjoying something willing suspension of disbelief if you will yeah, that diegetic world needs rules. It needs rules. And the, the Doctor Who universe has just had one of its most crucial rules destroyed. In that the Doctor's pretty much only weakness no longer exists. I for one think that's a terrible idea and I can't believe I'm agreeing with Vox, but uh, hey... Stranger things have happened. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like this video if you have enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to Will of the Fans if you'd like to see some more of me, because I'd love to see more of you. I'll be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, see you next time.